Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part nine of my 3D printed scrap metal sculpture inspired Geiger alien xenomorph suit. So last time I worked on mounting the head onto a strapping system, which I've got just here, made of metal brackets and 3D printed parts in both rigid and rubber material. I mounted this stick so the head can fit on there with a gimbal and it can float nicely around. Um, this is a strapping system from one of my Iron Man suit attempts. Um, which has since been replaced, so it's now spare. It needs some trimming, but we're going to fit it onto the alien suit and make all of the pieces mount on it. So then we've got the big shoulder pieces come round and the breastplate goes onto the bracket on the front. So today we're going to have a look at making some more of the body sections and I'm going to be starting with the shoulder sections. So I used some thinner conduit in the head, which was about this size, which wasn't 3D printed. So I could just totally cheat on the shoulders and use this big conduit to kind of put that big sweeping shoulder piece on each side which would be quite easy to do and um, just make some brackets to hold it on however I think that's cheating a bit too much and I really wanted to make as much of this suit 3D printed as possible so in fact what I'm going to do is use this as a template so I can work out roughly how long it needs to be and then I'm going to 3D print the big sweeping shoulder pieces the added advantage is of course that I can put custom pieces on to attach this or the 3D printed equivalent to the rest of the suit and the shoulders and add all those features on. So let's have a look at some CAD. So my plan is to print a hybrid print of rubber and rigid material using the Lulzbot Flexi Dually Extruder which um, can extrude NinjaFlex rubber and ABS plastic and mix the two together in the same print. And this is how a lot of the alien pieces have been made. So I'm going to make my own flexible hose. The blue parts here are rigid ABS and the red ring through the middle there is NinjaFlex. So this was uh, a fairly easy idea to come up with. Um, you can see it's got little tabs um, in the middle there and the little tabs are to allow me to plug all of those into something which will eventually form it around the shoulders. So the only challenge I had with um, doing this is that this is quite a complicated piece. When I exported the STL file for 3D printing, it was 891 megabytes. Um, so the next piece of software in the line is Slicer, which prepares that part for 3D printing and generates the G code, which actually tells the printer what to do. Have a look at part one of the Alien project for more information on that. But basically, uh, Slicer didn't really like an 891 meg STL. It was extremely slow to import, and then trying to um, define which parts um, are rubber and which are rigid, uh, basically it hung, and um, it probably would have got there eventually with maybe a faster PC, but I waited a couple of hours and then gave up. So instead I designed this part, which is very, very similar, but you'll notice it's got lots of flat edges, so that makes the file significantly smaller. The STL that came out of this was around 26 megabytes. Uh, which is much easier for Slicer to handle. And the reason for that is that, of course, um, uh, a curved object is much more data um, than lots of flat objects, basically, simply put. So this uh, file is much easier for Slicer to handle, and um, therefore we can process it much more easily for 3D printing. So again, the blue is rigid ABS, and the red is going to be NinjaFlex. Now, this, uh, the sketch line on the bottom, this blue line you can see just here, um, that's basically 200 million diameter, so the whole length of this is going to be, be um, just over 600 mil, which is just the length that I need, and it fits on the print bed of the Lulzbot Taz. So I'm not sure how long it's going to take to print, but let's um, slice that up and we'll get it printing and see what happens. Alright, so we're about seven hours into the print. I'm printing this on a Lulzbot Taz. And I've got Lulzbot's Flexi Dually Extruder, which is dual extruders. Uh, well, the front one is there for doing Ninja Flex. The back one is for doing rigid material. So if you remember, all my blue parts in the CAD are the outside parts, which are rigid ABS. And it's just got to the part where it's putting Ninja Flex in the middle. So I don't know if you can see that. Let's just try and zoom in there. So we can see it's putting that core through and it's switching between extruders on each layer. So there it goes, putting NinjaFlex in with the front extruder. And now it's retracting NinjaFlex and bringing out the ABS for the other parts. 
So here's the finished piece. It took 19 hours 50 to print. Um, so I actually printed the ABS in quite a dense infill. I did it in about 70% solid. So that's probably why it took so long. And the reason for that was so that the Ninja Flex layers had something to print on top of. So if you print ABS parts in a, an infill that's too sparse, then when it comes to lay Ninja Flex on the top, there's nothing to stick it to and it doesn't work. So that's why I did it that way. Um, I do need two of these. So I'm probably gonna spend the majority of this episode making these parts and not a lot else, um, but we'll see how it goes. I may well print the second one in about 10% infill um, or something and take a chance and see if that works out just to cut some hours off the print because uh, uh, 20 hour prints aren't really much fun. But um, anyway, you can see this is flexible. It's still got the brim on the bottom, so I need to uh, trim that and break them. And that brim was to stick all of these parts to the bed. So these break, and as I break them, then obviously it becomes more flexible. So I need to do some clean up on those parts all the way through, basically. And then obviously this whole thing is going to become one flexible hose. So this is the second one. We're actually only on four hours 47, and we're already well into the Ninja Flex there. So we've shaved a couple of hours off. And hopefully this one will complete in a lot less than 19 hours. So we're on 8 hours 42. Hopefully you can see the infill here is less dense. It's only 10%. Um, it's still printing perfectly well. So I'm hoping that's going to finish in less than 12 hours this time instead of 19. So here are the two items, they've come out really well. So obviously I've cut the link and now they're super duper flexible. So now we can shape these onto the shoulder here. So basically they're gonna be attached to this bracket and shaped up over here. So we need to build some stuff to hold them in shape. The front here can be welded onto the triangular bracket. We need to kind of hold that in an arch over the top there and get the angle straight. So my original plan was to use the tabs that you can see on the inside of this here. I was going to use those um, to plug into basically stilts on every section that hold them in place. Um, that's going to be quite tricky to design and get the angle right. What I really want to do is arrange it by hand and then make that part later as part of the shoulder feature. So what I'm going to do to make the main shape over the shoulder is just make this bracket so uh, basically looking from this side this will sit onto the shoulder and I can acetone weld the curled piece on there and then I've got this piece with two screw holes which is going to screw onto the metal bracket on each shoulder so essentially that's going to sit up this way and one opposite it facing the other way and that'll hold the two pieces over the shoulders and it will screw onto the bracket and I can set the angle get that right and then I can design all the spokes essentially as another feature So I've printed out my two pieces, here they are. Those are gonna fit onto here. So I've got screw holes in the bottom, as you saw in the CAD diagram. And those are gonna fit onto this. I can change the angle there. And then I'm gonna use these to shape around these nice pieces. I'm just gonna do this some more. I'm quite happy with those. So we're gonna stick those so they're shaped around there. That piece will sit on the shoulder. And that piece can come around in that direction. Obviously it'll be easier when they're stuck on to shape it up. So let's get those acetone welded on there in the same place. And then we can screw this on here and attach the front onto the triangular bracket. I'm actually sticking onto the surface here, which was flat down on the print bed, and as was the back of these. So I've got two really smooth surfaces to stick together. So that's gonna be really easy to do, just with a dab of acetone. This plastic is ABS, which dissolves in acetone. So as with the previous parts, I can actually make a chemical weld um, and stick that together. So I've got some more stuff in this pot you've seen before, which is ABS dissolved in acetone to make an ABS paste. But I probably don't even need that. I can probably just put a dab of acetone on 
just stick this on here. So um, I'm going to go for the fourth segment to start off with. So there's a little bit hanging out of the back and the rest of that's going to go all the way around and leave a longer piece on the front. So I must remember to make opposites when I do the other one so that I can make the uh, left and right shoulders. So I don't know whether it's easier to turn it up this way. Get the first couple stuck on there and then work my way around. So try for one with some acetone here. So I've got the fourth one. Yeah, that should, should make a good bond. It feels very, uh, obviously very flat on very flat. So just hold that on there for a few seconds. So I've stuck down both ends, and now I just need to put a bit of acetone in the middle there and um, get a few selected other ones stuck so it's nice and rigid. I'll just hold that in place for a bit. So here it is, here's my one shoulder, that's going to fit on there, which just needs a couple of screws. And then this piece is going to get bent round here to make the nice contour. So I just need to position that part, drill a couple of holes and should be good to go. So those are screwed on here, so we've got uh, just about the right angle, hopefully. And the next thing is to, of course, acetone weld these onto the bracket here. So we can put these either side to get those nice sweeping shoulders. So I'm just going to stick those on, and then I'll pop it on and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, I've attached those pieces there, so we've got these nice sweeping shoulders. And of course this whole harness now lifts off here, so if I just lift this off the body harness, um, and I can put that on, in fact. So, I think that's shaping up quite nicely. Obviously, with the padding that I've got on here, this is going to sit slightly higher. But essentially, I've got those characteristic shoulder shapes and the big scooping collarbones. And, of course, the neck is going to come out from this section, coming up the stick, which holds the head on, and come up to the front of the jaw. And the rest of the chest plate and the breastbone will get built down here with the ribs that come round. And I'm hoping the entire front of the suit will just lift off so I can take it off. And the back of the suit is going to go on like a backpack, um, basically attached to the strapping system. But I'm pretty happy with how that's shaped up and my innovative hybrid prints. So that's all I've got for this time. Don't forget to check back next time. Next week will be Hulkbuster, followed by another episode of my 3D printed scrap metal inspired Geiger alien xenomorph suits.